Amen. Well, good evening. We do welcome you to this Tuesday evening prayer meeting and Bible study here at Edward Street Baptist Church. We're delighted that you're joining with us. A number away traveling. We'll pray for them in a moment as we come to our prayer time. We're thankful that we can be here together this evening. Just as we begin our service, Psalm 89, verse number 1, the Bible reads, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever, and build up thy throne to all generations, Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord. Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who is in the heaven? Can be compared unto the Lord. Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Would you bow with me as we open our service in a word of prayer? Our Father in heaven, we come before thee this evening and we praise thee, our God, that thy word reveals to us and that our own hearts and souls bear witness that thou art a merciful God. We praise Thee, our Father, that Thou art the God of mercy, that Thy mercy and Thy love has been shed abroad to us. We praise Thee that Thou art the faithful God, that Thy faithfulness is in the congregation of the saints, that we see it and we know it and we can be known of Thee. We praise Thee, Father, for who Thou art. We thank Thee that Thou art a God that has promised to never never leave us nor forsake us. We praise Thee that Thy mercy is found even in the fact that Thou art here with us at this moment. And so, Father, we pray as we come into this prayer meeting, as we come and we prepare our hearts to worship Thee, to pray unto Thee, and to sing Thy praises, we ask, dear God, that Thou would please meet with us. We pray that all distractions would be set aside. We pray that our hearts would have come prepared to hear from Thee that we would know when we leave this place that we have heard from Thee. We ask that as we come to our time of prayer, that Thy Spirit would enable us and strengthen us in prayer, that we would ask in faith believing that Thou art able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Father, we pray as we come to Thy Word that our hearts would be open to receive it, that we would be encouraged, that we would be strengthened to know that Thou art a merciful God. Oh, Father, please meet with us now. We pray for those who are away from us. Please strengthen them. Please bless them where they are. Bring them back to us very soon, we do pray. For we ask these things in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, and for His sake. Amen. Amen. Let's take our hymnals. Let's sing together an opening hymn, hymn 332. 332, not normally a, a hymn we would sing on a, on a Tuesday, but a hymn we would normally sing in a gospel meeting. It goes right along with the message this evening. Hymn 332, Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great, and grace was free. Let's stand together as we sing hymn 332.
Amen. You may be seated. Wonderful singing. And if you would, take the Word of God for a scripture reading. And God willing, we'll continue in Psalm 51. But let's take our Bibles to Psalm 136. Psalm 136 for our scripture reading this evening. And this may be a very familiar psalm to you once we begin to read it. Psalm 136, and we'll read the entirety of this psalm. And of course, I'm sure you'll find a very quick theme here in our service as we look together at this psalm. Psalm 136, in verse number 1, the Bible reads, O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. O give thanks unto the God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him who alone doeth great wonders, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that by wisdom made the heavens, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that made great lights, for His mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for His mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for His mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for His mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for His mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for His mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for His mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for His mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him which led His people through the wilderness, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him which smote great kings, for His mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for His mercy endureth forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever, and Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever, and gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever, even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever, who remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever, and hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever." Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. And we know that our God will add his blessing to the reading of his word. And if you leave your Bible open there in Psalms, we'll be back in Psalm 51, but we'll come to Psalm 136 as we come to our Bible study in just a few moments after our time of prayer. Let's take our prayer bulletins, if you would, and uh, just... To make sure, does everybody have one of these? If you need one, just lift your hand. Yep, just two over here, Tommy. These two, yep, there we go, very good. If you've got some extras there, should be some, very good. All right, yep, there's plenty, it's all right. There we go, there should be plenty. Yep, okay, good. Let's take the prayer bulletin there, and we'll look together at this, and thankful so far for what the Lord has done this week already in our, in our services very good. All right. <laughs> Very good. Thankful for this week for all that we've seen and known of the Lord. We praise the Lord for a wonderful day on the Lord's Day. And thankful for visitors in both services. And we'll speak more about that in a moment. Thankful for a number of children in our Sunday school and three new children. I think 49 children in the Sunday school. We praise the Lord for that. And looking forward to what the Lord has for us. Um, throughout the rest of this week. Thankful today, this afternoon, we began um, a class um, for, a, uh, for the members of the church and for, um, well, we've started for the members and then in the next round we're going to do for anyone who wants to be a member. So in coming weeks I'll talk to those who, who have a desire to be a member and would like to move ahead with that. And uh, we started a, a little bit of a Bible study together on a Tuesday afternoon. Thankful to have a start to that this afternoon and I uh, sent them all home with homework. So if you're saying, wait, I missed on the class, don't worry, the homework will come. And uh, they're going 
going home to do a few things and, and we'll be speaking in coming weeks. If you have a desire to be a member here, there's some of you who've been a member of the previous church for well over 60, 70 years. If you have a desire to be a member of this church, then please come speak with me and we can begin to talk about those things. That'll be very good. We're thankful for this class moving forward over the next several weeks. This week, all of our regular service times and weekly schedules are moving forward, and we praise the Lord for that. This Friday, our Mums and Tots starts back up after the two-week break because of the, the half-term holiday, and uh, looking forward to having our toddler group again this Friday at half nine. Youth Rally will move ahead on the evening at 6 p.m., and please be in prayer for our young people. And as well, there'll be a group of us heading down to, um, I keep saying South Cumbria, I, I missed the word, South of Cumbria, and uh, going down to Carnforth, I think is where it's at, and uh, going down for a, a youth meeting down there as well. There'll be a, a carload of us going down there, so please pray for that meeting as well. And um, we'll both, uh-oh, I think I said something wrong. That's Lancashire. It's South of Cumbria. I was... I was close when I said South Cumbria, South of Cumbria. Yes, very good. Heading down to Lancashire for a, uh, a, a meeting and uh, looking forward to that on Friday evening as well. Please be in prayer for that. Saturday, God willing, our regular outreach is moving forward. We won't have our normal meetings together, but we will still have people going out on the doors in the morning and in the city center in the afternoon. So if you'd like to help with that, just speak with me um, or Others who normally go out, Jimmy and others, and uh, Malcolm and others who normally go out, you can speak to any of us. We can give you some direction there. And uh, if you'd like to help with that, this Saturday as well at 1 o'clock is our Spring Ladies Tea. And so please make sure, ladies, if you're coming, planning to come to that, please make sure you're prepared for that. There is a sign-up sheet on the back table with the different food items that are needing to be brought along. So if you've not noticed that yet, please uh, sign up on there, and that will be very good. Looking forward to having a number of different churches gather with us for that ladies' tea Saturday at 1 p.m. Next Sunday, this coming Sunday, after our evening service, we'll have a teen fellowship, so please continue to pray for our teens. God willing, they've been practicing a song they'll be sharing with us on Sunday evening, so please do all you can to be here in the service for our gospel meeting at 6 p.m. That will be very good. Coming up later on, the 27th of April, you'll see inside on the right-hand side there, Crown Hall graduation. Please pray for our two students and others who are graduating, and both Izzy and Santi are graduating with a one-year um, certificate from Crown Hall, and um, please pray for them as they're praying about what is next and they're considering if the Lord would have them to come back and spend another two years at Crown Hall or to finish with this year and move on. So please pray for them and pray for the Lord's will in their lives. On the 28th of April, that'll be a week from this Sunday, is our student farewell service. And so please be all be in both of the services there on that Sunday and do all you can to encourage our students. They've been a great blessing to us. And as we usually do on that Sunday, on the Lord's Day, um, anything that is taken up in the collection that's not otherwise designated will go as really a thank you to these ladies. And they've spent money out of their own pockets to come up every week from um, Birmingham, south of Birmingham, to get back down every week. And so and we'll give just a bit of a thank you to try and help them as they continue on, as the Lord leads them. And especially if they're coming back, they, they would definitely need as much as, as we can bless them with because they come back to, again, not working a regular job, but coming back to their studies. So please pray for them. And if you'd like to give in that collection, that'll be on the 28th, unless it's marked otherwise. If you have other things you normally give towards, you can mark it otherwise. That's no problem. Coming on into May, the 4th of May, there's a men's breakfast downstairs at 10 a.m. There's also a sign-up sheet on the back for that men's breakfast. And uh, we're just now trying to learn how many eggs to bring and how many tins of beans to bring. And so we've, we've missed it the last couple of times. We've had some shortages on some things and too many of other things. So we're working on it. So what it says on the paper is what we think we need. And so if you'd like to sign up to bring any of that, there's even a spot to sign up just to bring red sauce or brown sauce. If you're not much of a cook, that's no problem. Or salt and pepper or other things like that. I might take those and uh, then you can all do the cooking. That'll be great. But that's on the 4th of May. 26th of May is an after church fellowship and then on into June, the Appleby Horse Fair Outreach, Cumberland Show and Father's Day. Different things coming up. I believe that's all the notices unless there's anything I'm missing. Very good. Well, let's just mention a few prayer requests here, and then if you have anything to add, we'll just work through this quickly and um, just make a few notices here, a few comments, and then if you have anything to add, please have that ready. Underneath the health concerns, um, if you go down about halfway down there, and please continue to pray for the McAllister family and, and uh, Sid, especially with this fall that he had this past week, please continue to pray for both Sid and Jackie and ask the Lord 
um, to give healing there and spiritual encouragement. Continue to pray as well for others who are recovering at home. And Brian Duddy recovering and praying that he can go home soon. Please pray for him. And then as well, Ruth Wally, Phoebe, and Peter Wilsonfish. You'll see them down below there. They each need our, our prayer for trying to recover from these different things that they've had recently. Continue to pray for Bill, this friend of uh, Jennifer Clark's, and um, pray for him. And he's had a, a very severe stroke and is in hospital there, um, I believe, at the RVI. So please continue to pray for him. Pray especially for his salvation. Continue to pray for Betty. I got a very encouraging message from Heather today. And Betty's doing much, much better than she was on the Lord's Day. And she was really struggling after having this um, pacemaker put in. And, um, but she's doing much better. Heather said she's eating okay and, and there's no more bleeding. They got that under control with the bandage and everything. And she's feeling much better. So we praise the Lord for answered prayer. But let's continue continue to pray for Betty. And one more there, if I may add, please pray for Jennifer Clark. And uh, I've not spoke to her today, but if you saw in the morning meeting, they left quite quickly. And I messaged her and asked, and she just said that she was feeling really dizzy and just didn't feel right. So they went home and, and uh, she said she was pretty much lying low all day yesterday. And so I've not heard from her today, but let's just pray for Jennifer and Jack and um, pray for Jennifer's health and pray that everything will be okay there and that she'll have strength. You'll see underneath of the health concerns, one of these chapels that we're highlighting from and different works throughout the Crown Christian Heritage Trust and this week praying for the Beaches Road Baptist Chapel and uh, they would have just started their service, their Tuesday prayer meeting in the last five minutes and so please pray for them. Pray for Levi and Brittany Mullins there, their boys, Charlie, Oliver and Edward. Uh, pray, pray for the Mullins especially. This, this last month has had a lot of injuries for their boys and their young boys and there's three of them and so I think one had one broken bone and another one had some stitches on his head and some other ones to just they're just young boys. They're just playing around, but pray for them and um, pray for the Mullins and also pray for Ben Gallion. We know Ben very well and he's a great blessing. Please pray for him as well as he helps there at the Ministry of Beaches Road. You'll see underneath the special request there next to the health concerns, we're praying for our nation, for our prime minister, those who have influence and power, praying for our outreach ministries and our Sunday school, for the Crown Hall term, and uh, we can cross off that, la that last one. We're not praying for the holiday club that's upcoming, though we should continue praying for the work of the holiday club. Continue to pray for our trainees, Izzy and Santiana, and then praying for around the world. The next um, gospel mission um, is the, I think this is, uh, yes, this is correct. This weekend, the 19th and 20th of April. So this Friday and Saturday, there'll be a group going over um, to the Netherlands for this gospel mission. So please pray for them. I believe it's uh, Pastor Jonathan McClure from Brighton is going. I'm almost positive. So if you'll pray for Pastor McClure as he'll be there preaching and ask the Lord to help him. And then continue to pray for the work in Zimbabwe and Victoria Falls. Pray for the Moorlands and Reuben as they're there. And uh, you see those different requests there. On the other side, we're praying for those that are raising support to come join the ministry of the trust. Continue to pray for the McPike family. And uh, they're nearly at full support and praying that they can arrive this summer. We praise the Lord for that. And uh, that Chris and Natalie were here at our um, carol service two years ago. They sang a special. You may not remember them. If you saw them, you may remember them. And uh, they sang in our carol service. But they're praying for Scotland. And we are asking the Lord to open a door into Scotland. They're praying very specifically about some of the larger cities in Scotland that God would give us a, a nail as it were in his holy place as, it, as Ezra says they're praying for some open door into Scotland and so would you pray with them about that as well James Evans and the Torres family are both also raising support to come work in the ministry of the trust please pray for them and then our ministry highlight you'll see here on the bottom right hand corner please pray for a street preaching and we praise the Lord for the encouragement it's been if you've been out in the city center when we've had a bit of time of street preaching you'll know what I mean. It has been a great encouragement. And uh, I'll readily confess to you, it is my least favorite ministry. And uh, at those who go out know, I stand next to the board for about 10 minutes just trying to get the first word out. And um, I, I'm not, I, I can talk here, okay, but when you're out there, it's something a bit different. And so please pray for those who go out. And uh, maybe you say, I could never get up and share a word. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to at all, but a crowd draws a crowd. And so if you're out in the city center, you're near the town, 1 o'clock on a, on a Saturday, and uh, 1.15 by the time somebody gets up and begins to speak, then um, just come around and you just stand around. And if you're standing there listening, others will come and listen. And we praise the Lord just about every single week that we've preached in the city center, someone has stopped and listened. And even Sunday evening, we had a family visiting with us. And uh, they came because they heard us preaching in the city center a few weeks ago and uh, had talked about how they wanted to visit this church, but they weren't sure. And then they 
they kind of forgot about it. And then they heard us in the city center and they thought, well, we really need to come. And so we praise the Lord for visible fruit. And uh, let's pray for this ministry here. And there's a big... Um, uh, a large amount of information there you can read and uh, pray about those that we're preaching to. Very good. Well, that's all of that. I'm sorry it took a minute. Is there anyone we can add to this list or anyone we can highlight? Yes, sir. I think releasing that poem at the end of April, but I think that's been delayed a bit. They're moving him back nearer home, down to Middlesbrough. Okay. This weekend, well, Monday. Um, to a place that's like an in-between, if you like, from hospital to home. Uh, like a rehab okay. unit. Yeah. Sort. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he said for six weeks, is that the plan? So it's going to be a bit longer before he actually gets home. Mm. So they're still, I think, still assessing him. They've been assessing him in a flat You're right. where he is, but now they're moving him close to home. Good. Good. Well, let's pray that this, that this um, rehab unit is exactly what Brian needs. And we praise the Lord for the miracle that his life has been preserved and that he's made such steps after this motorbike accident. Let's continue to pray for him as he's there heading towards Middleborough. Praise the Lord. Anybody else this evening we can pray for? Any updates at all? Let's, let's pray for Miss Jean Slater, and she's had a bit of a, a rough go the last night with her hand and her arm, I think, her hand. Yeah, just, yeah, her hand and her wrist. So let's pray for the Slaters. Pray for both of them. And uh, Phillips had a rough go as well, I think, in the last night. And so let's just pray that the Lord will give them health and strength. And they've got some different doctor's appointments and visits coming up soon. Let's just pray for wisdom and all of that. Pray that God will um, really enable them as they both desire, desire greatly. And uh, they would never get up here and say it, but they're truly heartbroken about not being able to do as much as they've done in the past. And so... Let's pray. Pray that the Lord will help them. Help them in this time. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good. Definitely. Yeah. Gracie took the students by to see her about a week ago. It was probably about two or three weeks ago by now. And, um, but it was the same, same thing. They said that she had gotten a lot of visits in the beginning and that had waned. So let's pray for Ruth Wally and to pray for her encouragement and the Lord's strengthening of her as she's recovering from the stroke at home and continue to pray for Ian. He's back and forth between her house and work and his house and he's doing a lot caring for her. Let's pray for him. Anyone else this evening? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Wow. Well, let's pray for Alicia. You'll see her there just underneath Ruth Wally. And uh, this is a friend and a former neighbor of the Salkelds. And let's pray for her. And there's just a lot of different health concerns that they just can't seem to figure out. And so let's pray for wisdom. And at first they thought maybe she was just acting up, not wanting to go to school. But there, there's a definite health concern there. They're just not sure what it is. And so let's pray for wisdom from the Lord uh, for the doctors with this appointment. Very good. Any others this evening? Let's continue to pray for the Reed family. Continue to pray. It's wonderful to have Miss Pam with us this evening. But let's continue to pray for them. And, and I was speaking with uh, Pastor... Or, or, Mr. McRae, Mr. William McRae this past week, and he was asking about them and talking finally of Pastor Reed, and, and let's pray for them as they're continuing to mourn the loss of Pastor Reed, and pray for Sharon and Debbie, and uh, no doubt Debbie will be joining in online with our service, so continue to pray for them and for their health concerns. Anyone else this evening? I don't want to leave anyone out. Good. Well, let's pray, and uh, we'll do what we usually do, and uh, we've kind of been going back and forth with our prayer time, but we'll open it up and uh, to anyone who feels led of the Lord to pray, and the way that we do this on a Tuesday evening is I'll ask one of the men to open us in a word of prayer, and I'll ask uh, Malcolm Collins if he wouldn't mind to open us in just a few moments, and um, what, we, what we do is we like to pray together, but we like to give anyone an opportunity to pray. And so we don't pray long prayers, um, but we, we believe that um, God answering prayer is not about length, but about fervency and about faith. And so let's pray fervent, faith-filled prayers. 
And uh, we ask as well that as we're all together so that we may agree in prayer, let's all pray in the same language. I know some of us know different languages, but that may not be necessarily the thing when we're all together to pray in a different language. Let's all pray in a language that we can agree together, one another in prayer, and that'll be very good. And uh, then uh, let's not leave as well long gaps between our prayers. If you know God wants you to pray, then when one person finishes, you stand and you pray or sit if you need to and pray. Um, But I'll ask Malcolm to open us in prayer and then just after a few moments, after an appropriate time, I'll come back up and I'll close us in a word of prayer. Malcolm, would you lead us? Our gracious, loving God and Heavenly Father, as we come into thy presence now, Lord, as we bring before thee our requests, our petitions, and our praises, we ask, our Heavenly Father, you would help us in our prayers. Help us to pray, Lord. Help us to pray from our hearts. Help us to pray with sincerity. Lord, we pray that we would not pray amiss. We ask, Lord, that you would help us. Fill us with thy spirit this night, Lord. We pray we would know the unction, the power, the infilling of thy spirit. Lord, as we are gathered here, Lord, there are many requests on this list. There are those that are in ill health. And they need a touch of strength from thy hand, Lord. We think particularly at this time of uh, Betty, our sister, Lord, and we thank you that she is recovering. We pray that recovery will continue at pace. We think of Ruth Wally, Lord, and we know, Lord, that she is feeling somewhat lonely, Lord, and we pray that you will continue to heal her. But also give her peace, Lord, and to know that she is in your presence at any time. She is never alone, Lord. None of us are ever far from our Lord and Saviour. We can call upon him in prayer at any moment and any time, any day. Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, for those times of encouragement when we see prayers being answered. Lord, we, as Christians, lead lives which can be um, up on the mountains one moment and down in the valleys the next. And yet, Lord, you are never far from us. If we turn to thee, Lord, if we remember, Lord, that the grace and the mercy that you've shown to us throughout our lives, that our Christian lives, we, and even before we were saved and born again, Lord, that that you know, thy hand has been upon us and guiding us and leading us all our lives. Father in heaven, we are encouraged, we are built up, we are strengthened to go onwards in the Christian walk. And we pray, Lord, that we would live lives that are pleasing in your sight, that, Lord, we would not do anything, think, say, or do anything that would bring shame upon thy name or upon honor, uh, the honour of thy name. We pray, Lord, that thy name would be glorified by everything that we think, say, and do. Help us, Lord, to be weaned more and more from the things of the world, looking only unto Christ, drawing ever closer to him, relying upon him, leaning upon him for all our daily needs. And Lord, we would pray for this world in which we live, especially the land in which we live. We ask, O God, that you would revive this land, Lord. We pray you would start with thy people, start with us, Lord, as individuals, Lord, we each need a reviving. We need to be woken up, Lord. We need to be drawn into that state where, Lord, we think only of thee and thy glory. Father, we pray for our, those that lead us. We pray for our King, that he might be converted. We pray for uh, Prime Minister and uh, all these deputies and other uh, politicians, Lord, that each one would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want leaders that will rule wisely in the fear of God. Lord, we want to be able to continue to uh, worship freely, to be able to preach the word of God freely and openly uh, in public and even in our churches. We ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that these these freedoms will not be taken away from us. Father, as we continue now in prayer, uh, each one of us, we ask that you would help us to pray. Help us through the power of thy spirit. And we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. (coughs) Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the great privilege to be able to come as a family of God to worship our Heavenly Father through our Lord Jesus Christ as we are prompted by the Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, we thank you that those who are uh, those who are born again believers are members of Christ, children of God, and inheritors 
of the kingdom of heaven. That we are members of the church of Jesus Christ, the called out elect people of God. And as your word says to us, we do not fully understand the immensity of it, but we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world in order that we might be blameless before him in, in love. And as Revelation tells us, how our names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And, O oh God and Father, we pray that many whose names are in that book might yet be brought to grace that through the working of the Holy Spirit. We do thank you, Lord, that you are building uh, your church. And we do thank you, O oh God, that you will not, that your Son will not come before you at the end of the age, having accomplished only part of what he set out to do. But he is willing that none should perish, that all should come to repentance. And we do pray, Lord, that you will add to the church daily those who should be saved. We thank you, Lord, for the faithful ministry that we enjoy in this place. But let us not be hearers only, but we may be doers of the word. We pray for those who, Lord, we mentioned this evening, who are sick and are cast down in different ways. We thank you, Lord, you're the one who can solve every problem. The tangles of life can and do. There's nothing too much for Jesus. There's nothing that he cannot do. And we thank you, O oh God, that you are the one who heals all our diseases, not only the diseases of the body, but also of the soul. And we cry mightily to you. We cry with expectation. We cry with longing hearts. We pray that we may come with true generous genuineness uh, before you, and that you will indeed, as the scriptures say, rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains of sin and ignorance might de be demolished at your presence. Mm -hmm. Hear our prayers, O God. Warm our hearts as we hear your word ministered even this evening. Bless all for whom we ought to pray. Watch over us and bless us. Forgive our sins, O God. Watch us afresh in the cleansing blood of Calvary. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being your children privilege of serving Jesus. Lord, we thank you for our heavenly home, that this life is just a shadow of what is to come. Lord, help us to prove ourselves faithful to you, Lord, in this, in this life. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that he can make us effective, and we pray, Lord, that you would, uh, that he would empower us, Lord, and enable us to do the work that you've given us to do. Lord, we thank you for the joy that there is in serving you. We thank you that you lift our burdens, Lord, and that you take and you are willing to use us, Lord. It is a privilege. And we pray, Lord, that if that it would please you to, to use us, Lord. We pray that if we are not fit to be used, that you would make us fit, that you would cleanse our hearts, cleanse our lives and our lips. Lord, help us to keep our goal to please you in all that we do. Um, Father, we love you, we want to make you known, and we pray that you would indeed use us every moment, Lord, that we would be available.
glory come and thank you, Lord, that we can come to such a holy God, although we are so poor specimens at times uh, of being your children. Lord, we pray that you forgive us and cleanse us from all our sins as we come. Lord, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight this evening. Lord, we, we thank you that we have freedom to come into a building like this and meet together as the body of Christ. Lord, we, we thank you for revealing yourself to us and opening our hearts to the, the good news of the gospel. We thank you for giving us faith to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we thank you for the gift of, of, of this wonderful, wonderful good news of salvation. And Lord, we, we do pray for those who go out week by week on a Saturday. Lord, we, we thank you for them. And we pray, Lord, that you would encourage them in the Lord their God as they go out and speak to people. Lord, of, of Jesus, the mighty to save, we pray for those who stand up and declare your word. Lord, that you would give them fruit, fruit for their labor, for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ alone. And Father, we do pray for one another that we may all be knit together in love one for the other. And Lord, that we may truly grow in the grace and knowledge and love of the Lord. And Father, we pray for each department, can I put it like that, of, of the church, the Sunday school, the mothers and tots, Lord, the young people's work, Lord, and, and the meetings on Sunday. Lord, we pray that you would make the truth of God a reality to each and every one who meets in this building, Sunday by Sunday and week by week. Lord, that we might know something of the power and the working of, of the Holy Spirit within each of our hearts. Oh, Father, that we may truly be examples of, of the salvation that you've given to us. Lord, that we may, oh, Lord, that we may glorify our God in our daily lives. That we may, as we were speaking this afternoon, come out and be separate from the world. That where our treasure is, there may our hearts be also. Lord, help us to love you with all our hearts, with all our soul, and with all our strength. Lord, this is the duty of our ourselves. Lord, we, we do ask you to bless the work in the different regions of, of the earth. But Lord, we think of, of uh, Derek Morland in it's in love Lord please give me help in encouraging that Lord we pray for the Netherlands too Lord that you would uh, develop a, a church for your glory and honour in them Lord we pray that from these places uh, may ra ra be raised up someone to lead the work uh, in those different places for the glory and honour of your name. O oh Lord, now hear our prayers. Bless us this night for Jesus' sake. Amen. We <coughs> thank you, Lord, this evening that we're once again in your divine presence. We thank you, Lord, for your nearness. And when we are grieving, Lord, you're there. We remember Lazarus of old when he passed away and his family was sad. And you wept, Lord, because you felt their pain. And you feel our pain. But sometimes, Lord, we forget that there's others who are grieving. And Lord, those that have lost loved ones, I will bring them to you. For I know what it is to grieve and mourn for a loved one. Lord, I lift them up to you. 
laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry, you cry alone. And so, Lord, among those that have been shedding tears because of a lost loved one, but those that have gone to be with you, they're not lost, they're safe in the arms of Jesus. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we're thinking of those that are still out there, lost, lost. And Lord, we lift them up to you tonight. We pray, Lord, you will give us a hunger, Lord, to really pray for them. Not just to quote scripture and talk the talks cheap, but Lord, just to have them led on our hearts, Lord, and to hold on to the rails of the altar until, Lord, you move in a mighty way. Lord, we know years ago there was a wonderful revival and many came into the fold. And tonight, Lord, we're thinking about a world that is broken. We're thinking about those, Lord, on the, on the road to a, a lost eternity. Oh, Lord, give us heart for them, Lord. Give us a heart, Lord, to pray, to pray as we've never prayed before. Give us, Lord, a hunger, a hunger to spend time in your presence. There's no presence like your presence, Lord. You understand our thoughts afar so off. Lord, you know what it is. Lord, you know you watch yourself, Lord, and see. You call and you call, Lord, to so many that are waiting and waiting and waiting. Lord, bring them in. And bring them in under the sound of the glorious gospel into this place, Lord, where you, where the message goes forth every week, Lord. We pray that you touch hearts and you lift them up, Lord, and you will speak to them and that they will come to know you. And Lord, we just pray for those that are just walking along and just normal Christians who don't think. Lord, we pray that you will just revive them again. Revive them, Lord, and bring them back to yourself. And now, Lord, as we wait further in your presence, Lord, we think of those that are sick, those that need the great physician. Lord, touch those that are sick. Touch those, Lord, that really need you tonight. Those that are crying out, Lord, for help. Lord, just, just move in a mighty way, Lord, and touch them with that nail-pierced hand. And heal them, Lord, and raise them up to help and spread the bed, we pray. And now, Lord, we just turn everything over to you this evening as we sit and listen to your precious word. Lord, write it upon our hearts and help us to listen to every word, Lord, and carry it home in our hearts, Lord. Lord, as food, like we need food, Lord, every day. Lord, we just need the spiritual food. We need that to keep our hearts up and to keep us just going on with yourself, Lord. So, Lord, we just pray that you'll break up the bread small to us, Lord, and just touch every one of us with the world tonight. May we go away and carry it in our hearts, Lord, and not go home and forget what it was all about, Lord. Just help us to remember that there our minister, he, he studies to bring us a message. And Lord, it's not easy. So Lord, we just come to you and pray that we will really, really listen and remember and the words that it speaks is life and health and strength to us, Lord. So, Lord, as we wait further in your presence, we just pray that you will anoint our pastor. Just anoint him tonight as the word goes forth in power and authority and touches every heart as we wait further in your presence. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. 
Oh, hallelujah to your wonderful name, Lord. We praise you tonight and glorify your name, knowing that you will just minister to every one of us. So we ask everything in the precious holy name of Jesus. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus, and we thank you that we can come before you, Lord. We thank you for this verse from Psalm 25 that you've laid on my heart just now, Father. And it reads, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for thou hast been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember me, me for thy goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring me out of my distress. Look upon my affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. I keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words, Father. Thank you for bringing them to me, Father. It eases my pain that I've suffered the last few years, Father. Only you know that pain, Father, and that feeling of desolateness. Father, I come to you now. I'm looking for answers. Your word says, anything you ask in my name will be granted. And I'm calling out to you tonight, Father. I need, I need you so strongly, Father. I can sit here and pretend to be strong and, 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 and be a part of this world, Father. But I don't want that, Father. I want you, Father. I need you more than I've ever needed anybody, Father. I need you come to me, Father, and hear my prayer. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne once again humbly. Thank you, Father, for giving this opportunity of prayer time. Uh, it gives us the opportunity at this time to think of others who are suffering, who are who need our touch, who are in prayer from God, and, and we, we know that you'll be with them at this time. And, uh, this time we do, we do indeed think of, of Betty and her recovery from her, her ordeal with the pacemaker and uh, we think of the McAllister family who are week in week out we think of them and give them our prayers and, and, and hope, hope that, that there's a good outcome in, in, in that family for, for all concerned, and particularly Sid who's had a really, really difficult time uh, and also we think of, obviously we think of the Reed family and passing them. Uh, we, we give thanks for our, our wonderful students who we've had this, this, this term and, and all the hard work and perseverance they've given us and all the hard work they've put into the Holiday Bible Club. We give thanks. And, and they've been a, we hope we've been a blessing to them, but they've certainly been a blessing to us. And we give thanks for all their hard work and, and dedica de dedication, Lord, to, to thy word and, and, and true to thy word as well. And, and we just wish them all for the future. Uh, as the student farewell uh, service is fast approaching, uh, we 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 also uh, we, we 
give encouragement to the uh, continued growth with the uh, with the Sunday school and, and, and the youth rally and, and also the mums and tots. Mm. It's wonderful that so many young, young children and their families are coming in now and, and hearing the, the, your word, Lord, the, the, the truth from the Bible. And uh, we, we just, it, it's, it's heartwarming and inspiring to, to see the new people, the new faces enter this church building. We just give thanks for all the ministry that uh, Pastor Jonathan's given us and Gracie and Debbie Henry. And, and we just, uh, we just, we're just so so blessed as a as a as a ministry, and we just we just give all, everything's true to your word, Lord, and, and we just give thanks for for, for all the for all the other coming events that we can look forward to, and all, and all the true blessings that we have in in this in this church family, and we just give our earnest heartfelt thanks for all of these elements, and uh, we just just hear our prayer, Lord, and, and we just give thanks and. Uh, thank you in your wonderful and gracious name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, as we continue in prayer, we praise thee that we have this time to come together to come away from the world and to meet in Thy presence. We praise Thee, Father, that we can come together as a group of like-minded believers, that we can come together with one accord, with one purpose to worship Thee and glorify Thy name and to seek Thy help in this time. And we pray, our Father, that Thou would please hear and answer our prayers. We praise Thee, Father, that we can bring all of these requests unto Thee. We praise Thee that Thou art the God of all comfort and all cares, that there is nothing too large for Thee, and yet, Father, there is nothing too small for Thee. We praise Thee that Thou dost know every situation, even greater than we do as we talk of these things. Even in our own lives, we thank Thee that Thou dost know more about us than we even know about ourselves. But Father, we praise Thee that Thou dost not just know about it, but Thou hast the power to change it. We praise Thee, Father, that Thou art the Almighty God, that there is nothing that is too hard for Thee, that the, the outcries of our hearts can be heard and can be answered according to Thy will. We praise Thee for the promise that was just prayed, that if we ask anything according to Thy will in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, that Thou wilt hear and answer. And so we pray, Father, please answer our prayers. Please be with us. Please be with those that we've mentioned, Father. Uh, we cannot name everyone, but... Please be with these uh, um, that are in hospital right now or that are just home and recovering or in appointments. Uh, we pray especially for Alicia. And we pray, Lord, that thou would please give wisdom to the doctors. Lord, please give understanding. I pray that this young girl would know exactly what is going on, that the doctors would know how best to help her. We pray for her mother, that she would have the strength and the wisdom to care for her daughter. And we pray for their souls, Father. We pray that Thou would show them, if they are not Thine, that Thou would show them their need of Christ, that they would call upon the Savior and be saved. We pray for Ruth Wally at home. Lord, please strengthen her and, and, and raise her back up, but please encourage her at this time. We pray that we as a church would, would um, go even out of our way to reach out to her more often and speak to her, not just pray for her. And Lord, I pray for Ian as well. Please strengthen him and uh, give him the wisdom as well that he needs to care for his mother at this time. We pray for the Wilson Fish family. We pray for our brother Peter and uh, Miss Stella. Lord, please strengthen them. And we pray for, um, again, wisdom for the doctors and these final um, things that need to happen, Lord, um, just I pray that they would know exactly what steps need to be taken to help Peter in this time. And Lord, I pray that Thou would please challenge and encourage them in these days um, to live for Thee and to do all they can to serve Thee. Lord, please show them how they can serve Thee at this time. Please encourage them, we do pray. And we pray as well for these friends of Jennifer Clark. We pray for Bill and for Rhonda. Lord, I pray that Thou would um, touch Bill and raise him back up. Give him an understanding of thy word, an understanding of his own soul and where he stands with thee. May he come to know Christ as his Savior. We do pray for Jennifer Clark with her health and also the Slaters with their health. Father, please give them strength. Give them an easing of any pain they, be, they, they may be in. 
and raise them back up. We pray for these other churches and that we are thankful we can uh, serve alongside and serve together in different events. We think now of the Beaches Road Baptist Chapel. And I pray for Pastor Mullins and his wife and his family. I pray for Ben Galleon as he's there helping them. I pray as they are in their prayer meeting at this time, opening thy word, please strengthen them. Please speak to them. I pray for the students that are with them this evening. Lord, challenge them in these last two weeks of their term to live for thee and give all to thee. We pray that thou would do a mighty work there, Father, and we pray the very same thing here. We pray that as we come to thy word, that thou would open our hearts to hear it. Please help us to see this plea and this cry of David, and that it is a plea, it is a cry that we can give to thee from our own hearts. Lord, help us to see that thou art a great God of mercy. I pray that thou would speak to us through thy word even this night. Help us, we do pray, as we would open thy word. For we ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> Oh, Amen. Well, I hope you'll take these, this prayer sheet and you'll continue to pray for these things and ask the Lord to help during these times. Let's sing one hymn just before we come to God's Word. Hymn 319. 319. This may not be a familiar hymn, but it'll be, a, God willing, a familiar tune that you know. Depth of mercy can there be, mercy still reserved for me. Can my God his wrath forbear, me the chief of sinners Spare. Let's stand together as we sing hymn 319. That's a wonderful hymn. I've never heard that one before. What a wonderful, wonderful thought. Let's come to God's Word. If you would, take your Bibles and turn back with me to Psalm 51. And we'll begin, as we did a week ago, to study through this psalm. And a week ago, looking more at the, the background of this psalm. And we come now to the very first verse. And we're going to take several weeks to study through this psalm. But a wonderful Wonderful truth that we find here right at the very beginning of Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, in verse number 1, the Bible reads this, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. I'd like you to notice the very first phrase there of this Verse, if you haven't picked up on the theme yet, I hopefully you'll get it here in all the hymns we've sung and the scripture reading we've had. Verse number one, the first four words, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. As we said, we began a week ago to study out this psalm. And with this thought, a thought that's been given to it by many 
Many commentators, many preachers, many pastors over many years have said the same thing about this psalm, that this psalm lays out to the believer the way back to God. What I mean by that is that every one of us, as a child of God, we will have moments where, because of our sin, because we still live in a sinful flesh, and because we still fall and we still stumble over our sin, not losing our salvation, but because of our sin, we will know separation from the fellowship of God. Not walking in communion with Him, not being as we should with Him, but in those times there is a way back to God. I praise God that in those moments when we know that we are not where we should be with Him as a believer, that there is a way laid out for us to come back to God. And we began looking in 2 Samuel 11 and 12 a week ago about the record of the tragedy, really, of David's sin and the confrontation of the prophet Nathan. We looked at that a week ago. We won't look at it again, but may I remind you, David's sin was not recorded so that we could all condemn him. There is no point in that. God laid out His sin for us and has recorded and has preserved His sin, not for us to condemn David, but one, for us to take warning, but then also for us to know for all of eternity, for all the days that we're here on this earth, that there is a way back to God. That even in the hardest of sins that a, that a believer may fall into, there is a way back to to God. And it was right when that prophet Nathan talked to him. I'll just read two verses here from 2 Samuel 12. Verse number 13, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. You say, again, how did David fall to this point? How did the great king, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the mighty man, the warrior king, the, 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 the man after God's own heart, how did he fall to this point? And we said a moment ago, but it's worth repeating, that any public fall is always preceded by a private fall. Somewhere in David's private life, God did not pl take the place he should have taken. And the problem and the struggle for many of us is that we are the same as David. We have a low view of God. And because of a low view of God, we then have a low view of the consequences of sin. We have a low view of the danger of sin because we do not view God as He is. And if we don't see Him as high as He is, we won't realize the danger of sin. That was David's problem, and that's the same struggle of every believer in this age and the ages moving forward. It is our sin that is dangerous. It is sin that should not be played with. Uh, pastor Sexton said, my pastor from America, he said, when we sin, we are looking God in the face and saying, I'll do as I please. That's what our sin is. We look God in the face and say, I'll do what I want to do. We know what our sin is. It's laid out for us. We have a conscience and as a child of God, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. When we sin, we look God in the face and say, I'll do whatever I want. Pastor Sexton continued and said, the higher our vision of God the more clearly we understand the seriousness of sin. And we must understand the seriousness of sin. And this is how we know that God restored David back to communion, back to fellowship, because we see that David understood his sin. It took him being confronted. He tried to cover it all up. He thought he was okay. God brought it back into his face. And when God confronted him with it, David confessed his sin forsook his sin, and the Bible now gives us this thought of coming back to God. And David's cry, we'll just look at verse number one this evening, David's cry begins with a wonderful truth, a glorious truth, and it is this truth, dear friend, our God is a God of tender mercies. Our God is a God of tender mercies. Mercies. Would you know that, notice that firstly this evening? Our God is a God of mercy. Think about it. David, humanly speaking, 
had no right whatsoever to ask God for anything. And before we begin to point the finger at David, dear friend, none of us have any right. We have no merit. We have no power, no privilege, no position. Oftentimes, when we get power, privilege, and position is when the temptation grow, grows stronger. It's when you and I have a little bit of power in and of ourselves that the temptation of sin gets a bit of a foothold. It is when we're constantly looking to God and not looking at ourselves that we keep that sin at bay, as it were. But the amazing thing is that though David had no standing, humanly speaking, with God, though he had no merit, though he had no right, where did David start? Because he didn't start with his sin. He really didn't even start with himself, though he says, have mercy upon me. Where did he start? Look at the verse here, if you would. He says, have mercy upon me, O God. David's fall came because he got away from God. But the way back to God, dear friend, is God. The way back to God is God Himself. David did not begin with his sin. He did not even begin with himself. David began with God. Dear friend, everything in our life must begin with God. The moment of salvation does not begin with ourself. Even when we share the gospel, we can immediately say all men are sinners, sin must be paid for, this, that, and the other. But really, we should first start with God loves all men. And yes, all men are sinners, and yes, sin must be paid for. But everything begins with God. And when we think about the way back to God, we must begin where David began. David began here with God, and he said, my God is a God of mercy. And because He's a God of mercy, I know I can come back. We read in our Scripture reading that 136th Psalm, and we won't take the time to read it again, but what was the common refrain, the common chorus of this Psalm? His mercy endureth forever. 26 verses, 26 stanzas, 26 refrains sung back and forth by the temple choir of Solomon's temple. All those different things. We have a great God. He saved us from Egypt. He killed the kings of Og and Bashan. He, he delivered us out. He brought us to His land. He gives us these things and the constant, constant, constant answer. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. Sung with this chorus answering every single verse. Not many people, or excuse me, no one knows exactly who uh, wrote Psalm 136. There's nothing in the title, but many believe it was David recounting Israel's history. But we know from later on into the Old Testament that it was sung in Solomon's temple. That someone before Solomon wrote it, and it was even sung in his temple echoing back and forth the two sides of the choir, responding one to another. But let me ask you, how could David be forgiven? That's our first question, isn't it? Oh, what has he done? Oh, he was this, that, and the other, but what has he done? Looked, lusted, stole, committed adultery, lied, covered it up, committed murder, not just the murder of this man, but the murder of others just to cover up his sin. How could David be forgiven? Before we point our fingers, how do we have hope of forgiveness? Friend, how can we, what standing do we have with God? We don't. But our God is a God of mercy. How can David be forgiven the same way you and I can be forgiven? Not because we have any merit, but because Christ took our punishment on Him. Christ went to the cross and was nailed on the cross, and all of our sin, David's and yours and mine included, were all laid on Christ, and Christ paid for them all. And the only reason we can come back to God is because He has had mercy. Understand, sin still brings consequences. There are scars of sin what we sow, we will reap. But the punishment of sin, the payment of sin has been paid in full. And while we may reap consequences of sin in this life, we will not pay for sin because the payment of sin is death and Christ died for us. 
Christ took our payment on Himself. One man said the fountain of God's mercy was opened at Calvary and now it freely flows. Oh, that fountain of mercy, dear friend, it freely, I'll get it out, freely flows to us. Our God is a God of mercy. But notice, secondly, as we think about this, as we think about our way back to God and we think about David's way back to God, not only is our God a God of mercy, but our only hope in life is the mercy of God. We have no other hope in life. Again, look at verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Would you mark two words there? By the end of this, hopefully, God willing, your Bible will be marked like mine is. Word after word after word in this this psalm. Mark two words in verse number one. According and according. Why is it that David had any hope of forgiveness? How is it that David had any basis upon which to plea? It was nothing of him. His only hope and our only hope is that we have a God of mercy. Dear friend, if we plead on any other basis but the loving kindness and mercy of God, we will never find our way back to God. It is only on His loving kindness. Notice how he says it. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to my need of you. No. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to my right standing with you. Have mercy upon me according to my many years I served you. No, have mercy upon me according to thy loving kindness. What a wonderful word. God's loving kindness. We teach our children or our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, be kind, be kind. Oh, but our God is loving kindness. More than that, He says, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Think about this thought. Someone, I read someone point this out and I just couldn't help but write it down. This was wonderful. David had many transgressions, but God had a multitude of mercies. David had many. Dear friend, you can put your name in there. Jonathan Heaton has many transgressions, but praise God, God, my God has a multitude of mercies. You could put your name in there. You have many transgressions. We all have many transgressions. But we must remind ourselves our God has a multitude of mercies. Dear friend, there's one struggle that we all have. It's the same struggle we've had for over 6,000 years. It's the struggle of sin. And the problem with our sin is that you and I cannot forget. Our God, we praise Him that He forgives and He forgets. That's what the Word of God says. But we don't forget. And often, what does our mind do? What does the flesh do? What does this world do? What does the devil himself do? He walks up to a door to our past and says, Look what you've done. You can't do this. You can't go there. You can't be that. You're not a Christian that can be used of God. Look at all you've done. Our minds constantly cast open the door and cast open the door. And if we're not careful, all we'll ever do is we'll be battered down to the ground and do nothing for God because we keep thinking about all that's in the past. But when the devil opens doors, dear friend, our God, I know I'm stepping off camera, our God closes the door. Our God closes the door and says, no, that's been forgiven. That's been taken care of. That's done. That's over with. Our struggle is that we don't forget. God says it's forgiven. It's forgotten. The devil throws open the door. But our God is a God of mercy. And by His mercy, He closes the door. Dear friend, our only hope is that our God is a God of mercy. May I say, we may not forget that those things have been forgiven, but that doesn't change the fact that they've been forgiven. They may cast back up into our mind. We may struggle with them, but that doesn't change the fact that God is a God of mercy. And if we've come to Him by faith and we're a child of His, then even after a Christian, after we've become a Christian, if we stumble and fall, the Bible says if we confess our sin, He is 
faithful and just to forgive us our sin, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friend, our only hope is Christ. Our only hope is the mercy of God. Let me just read a few verses to you very quickly about this thought of, uh, of Him being our only hope. Lamentations, you know it very well. Lamentations 3, 21 to 23. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. Dear friend, may I ask you, what are you recalling to your mind? Jeremiah said, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Most of the time, we live a defeated Christian life. And all we recall to our mind is everything the devil throws in and everything our flesh throws in, everything the world throws in. All we recall is all the times we've stumbled and fallen. But the, 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 the prophet Jeremiah said, I recall this to my mind and I have hope. It's God's mercies that keep me. It's God's faithfulness, His compassions. God measures out His faithfulness for us, dear friend. Do you, do you realize what this, what this says right here? He says they are new every morning. Uh, think about this, church. Our God is infinite. He's eternal. There's no end. There, there's no way to measure. God is immeasurable. But for our sake, He measures Himself. And every morning His mercies are new. Every morning His faithfulness is new. Every morning His compassions are new. He doesn't change Himself in any way, but for your sake, for my sake, He measures Himself and says, I'm new today. I'm new today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's infinite. He's eternal. He's almighty. He's all-powerful. But He measures Himself for us each day. Our only hope, dear friend, is the mercy of God. Habakkuk Chapter 3, the first two verses, a prayer of Habakkuk, the, prayer, the, the prophet of Shiganoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known in wrath, remember mercy. Oh, friend. Here, God, through the prophet Habakkuk, is pronouncing judgment upon Israel. And the wrath of God, the judgment of God, is looming over the nation of Israel. And Habakkuk, the prayer that he gives is, God, in your wrath, remember mercy. David came to God and said, God, in your wrath for my sin, have mercy upon me. Friend, our only hope is the mercy of God. Understand, we do not have the answer ourselves. We don't have time to turn there, but if you're taking notes, Hebrews 12, verse 29, Hebrews 12, 29, and Isaiah 64, 6. In Hebrews 12, 29, the Bible says that our God is a consuming fire. Speaking of His wrath, of His judgment. And in Isaiah 64, verse 9, the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Understand, we don't have the answer in and of ourselves to get back to God. He is a consuming fire of judgment and wrath on sin. He won't take what we think is good. And He says our best works are like filthy rags. Those filthy rags were only used for two uses. They were used for a, a, a woman in a certain time of the month, of her month, and they were used for leprous people to wrap their wounds. So vivid a picture. Some people write about these rags on the leprous people that you could wring out the infection that would get soaked up into them. And God says, your best work, my best work, is like that filthy rag. We can't do anything, dear friend. We have nothing to offer Him. Even as His child, we have no good works that give us merit. So we rely, our only hope is on His mercy. If I may make one more point and we'll close. We say our God is a God of mercy. Our only hope is the mercy of God. But lastly, our motive for everything in our Christian life is the mercy of God. If you'll turn just to one passage with me, you know very well in the New Testament, Romans chapter 12. 
Romans chapter 12. And notice the first two verses here of Romans chapter 12. It's a wonderful passage, one we know very well. We may, you may be able to quote it with me as I begin to read it. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The Bible reads this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now think about this, if we may do a very, very quick overview of the book of Romans. By the inspiration of God, Paul put to pen this great defense, this great exhortation, this great teaching on the gospel of God in the book of Romans. He starts, and you could even say, some have termed it, you can walk down the Romans road. He starts in Romans 3.23, and he tells you that all men are sinners. He moves on to Romans 6.23, and he says, look, sin must be paid for. The wages of sin is death. You can back up to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, and we find out that Christ died for sinners. And then you go on to chapter 10, and we find that Christ says, and God says, if you simply by faith call upon Christ, you will be saved. He gives this wonderful defense and exhortation of the gospel and the work of God in salvation. He even says uh, earlier in Romans chapter 8 how that same love that gives us salvation, we can never be separated from that love. An amazing passage in Romans chapter 8. Then he gets to Romans 12. And he says here, Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Is that what he says? What is the basis, the motive of our entire Christian life? He doesn't say, I beseech you, I beg you, present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's not what he says. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. What is our only motive? It is not, I'm born again, now everything I do is because I'm a child of God. It is partly that, let me explain that. But that's not all of it. And as well, it's not, well, I'm going to live this way because I need to gain that mercy of God. You see, our Christian life, my pastor used to always say, our Christian life is because of, not in order to. And he would explain it like this. Our Christian life, what we do, how we live, we do not live this way in order to gain mercy. Well, I'm going to read my Bible every day so that I can gain mercy. I'm going to go to church three times a week so I can gain mercy. I'm going to go out and preach on a Saturday. I can gain mercy. It's not in order to gain something. Our Christian life is because He showed me mercy. I'm going to dig into His Word. Because He showed me mercy, I'm going to tell everyone I can about what He's done for me. Because He showed me mercy, I'm going to meet together with the saints of God as much as I can. I will not forsake the assembling together of the brethren. I will not forsake who Christ died for. Because He showed me mercy, I'll do all this. You see, the motive of our Christian life, the begging, the beseeching of Paul, is by the mercy of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Because of what He's done, do all for Him. The basis of our entire life is His mercy. Just, just think of this, church. Christ deserves the most wonderful, the very best of what God has, right? He is God Himself, the third part of the Trinity, second part of the Trinity. He's God the Son. He's God incarnate. He's God in the flesh, and He's the Son of God. He deserves every wonderful thing. What do we deserve? We deserve hell. Truly, we deserve eternity in hell separated from God. And yet, Christ took our separation. Christ took the worst so that we could gain the most wonderful. So that we could have the greatest. And because of His mercy, we live as we ought to live. Because of His mercy, we do what we ought to do. 
It is the basis of our entire Christian life. Dear friend, I believe with all my heart that every day of my life is a gift of the mercy of God. It is God that gives you breath in your lungs. It is God that keeps your heart beating. It is God who gives life, sustains life, and it is God who will one day take life. And God is merciful and when He takes life, dear friend. We may not understand it here, but He's merciful when He takes life. He's the giver of new life. Every day is the mercy of God. And David knew this. And so when David started that journey back to God, the first thing he said was, Have mercy upon me, O God. So what do we do with this, dear friend? What does this teach us, this first verse of Psalm 51? It teaches us three things. When you remember your past sins... Don't doubt God's forgiveness. Dear Christian, when the devil throws your past sins in your life, do not doubt God's forgiveness. Secondly, when you sin, cry out to God for mercy and seek Him for cleansing. David said, blot out my transgressions. Do whatever you have to do, God, to make them gone. When we're in sin, seek Him for mercy. And lastly, when you think of where you would be apart from God and His mercy, let that thought motivate you to live as you should. I wonder, is that your prayer? I'm sure it's been your prayer as it's been my prayer many, many times. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. The way back to God, church, it begins with God and His mercy. It will continue with God and His mercy throughout, but it begins with Him and His mercy. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father in heaven, we love Thee and we praise Thee that Thou art the God of all mercy. We praise Thee that Thou art called merciful. Father, we praise Thee that Thy mercy has been shown to us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That Thy love displays Thy mercy. Oh, Father, help us to understand this truth. Help us to cling to it in the times when this world tries to drag us down. May we constantly and carefully seek for Thy mercy. Have mercy upon us, O oh God, we do pray. Help us to know Thy Word and to understand it. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing a closing hymn together. <clears throat> a wonderful hymn, hymn 344, one we know very well. 344, great God of wonders, all thy ways display the attributes divine, but countless acts of pardoning grace beyond thine other wonders shine. Who is a pardoning God like thee? Or who has grace so rich and free? Let's stand together as we sing this hymn.
standing. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Thank you for being here this evening. Church, we have a merciful God. We have a God full of mercy. And all that we have, all that we can claim, is because of His mercy. I hope we'll go encouraged that God has shown mercy to us. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Tommy, would you close us? Please be in prayer for the rest of this week. Pray very specifically for the ladies' tea. I hope you'll do all you can to be there, ladies. Praying much for that. And if not, if we don't see you before then, God willing, we'll see you on the Lord's Day. Tommy, would you close us in prayer? Audible prayers and the prayers that have gone up in silence, but we have to thank thee that thou knowest the heart of each one of us. And yea, our heavenly Father, this few will here this evening, and we've all came from different places. But the one thing we all have in common is not one of us good, good enough to be acceptable with Christ in our own, our own full, full, full issue. So we do indeed give thee thanks, Lord, for the great mercy that thou hast shown unto each one of us. And there's not one of us that be here, Lord, without that mercy. So we do indeed give thee thanks and praise, Lord, and ask that thou would keep, keep us in thy love, Lord, until the end of time. And we ask it in Jesus' name.